So what we're going to do in this quick tutorial is build a particle system. We'll then build an attractor that that particle system will follow and then we'll drive that attractor using connect so the particle system seems to follow your hand. So I'll start off by creating the actual geometry setup which is if I hold down control camera geometry light let go of control switch to top hit render and we have a render here. Uh, I'll then just put that into a null and set that null to display. We'll then go inside the geometry and delete out the torus and make a sphere. And this sphere is going to drive our particle system. So we'll start off by turning the sphere to being a polygon and then laying down a particle. And if I just set that to render now and just zoom out a bit just so we can see what's going on. Uh, there are a couple of things that we can do with this particle system. So first of all, I'm just going to go into the particles tab and bring the life expectancy down. This is because I'm going to do another little trick here, which is to go into state and set the time increase to 0.5 over FPS. So what this means is that rather than simulate, calculate the simulation once per frame, it calculates it twice, um, which I've found sometimes is quite useful when you're using attractors. <clears throat> So our attractor will be a sphere. It's quite simple. So this is our sphere here, and we can just set that to be wherever we want. I'll just set it to a polygon, just to, for the same, so it's the same as the other one. And then we're going to plug this into the attractor input, which is input 3 on the particle sop. So now we'll see that our particles are kind of coming out, but then they're kind of bouncing back in. So if I just disconnect that, the particles just come out and stop. If I reconnect it, they'll come out and then they'll kind of turn back on themselves because they want to kind of come back to being into the same sphere because these spheres are exactly the same. So I'm going to make both those spheres render and then I'm just going to come up a level and we can see now our geometry set up in the render pipeline. I'm going to lay down a material and it's going to be a wireframe. Um, and the reason for this is just for visualization. So now we can see the particles are all firing on each other and then I'm going to bring my camera out a bit, just so we've got a bit more room to play with. Maybe not 50, maybe like 20 or something. Um, and then I'm going to start moving around the attractor. So if I go inside and into Sphere 2, take this attractor, and then let's just offset that attractor. We can see that the particles go from this first uh, source sphere and then move towards the second sphere. So if I keep moving that around, wherever I move it in the screen space, the particles want to head towards that space. So we can see there they're kind of all fighting for that position. So we can make this a little bit nicer by first of all turning off the visual for our sphere and our first sphere. And if we just give our particles just a little bit of turbulence and we're going to bring that turbulence period quite high as well so the particles seem to flow towards the attractor. So there we go, they're flowing towards that attractor. To make that even more visible, we can then lay down an over in our render pipeline and create a feedback loop and just kind of fade it out over time. So if I then, oh, sorry, it helps if I can actually drag to the right place. Drag my over to the target, choose a level, and then set my opacity down. So we can kind of see the particles now flowing towards their destination. So that's the basic setup of a particle with an attractor. So the next step is to drive that with connect. So to drive that with connect, we can first of all lay down a connect chop. Uh, to show what I'm doing, I'm also going to lay down a connect top. And I'm just going to set my connect to be version 1, because connect 2 apparently doesn't like my laptop, so we'll use connect 1 for this purpose. This is exactly the same. Uh, as connect to, so no need to worry about that. Uh, we're going to set the skeleton to seated because I'm sat on a chair uh, and I'm going to also, for some reason, I can't turn on near depth mode unless I turn face tracking on. So I'll turn face tracking on and then I'm going to turn near depth mode on because I'm close to my connect. Um, so that's just a bit better. So now we can see me and I can move around, I can wave at the camera and all the rest of it. So we can use, let's just make this visible so we can see exactly what I'm doing in conjunction with this connect. 
So at the moment, we're getting world space positions and world space is the connect space. What this means is that we have uh, our X, Y, Z positions of our bones, which are all of these channels in here, are all relating to the world, to the 3D space, which the connect sees. We can calculate using this little toggle here, the image space positions. And what this means is that rather than getting the world coordinates, we'll get the coordinates in UV space for our screen. And this is really useful for the example that we're going to do now. So if I just choose select, now I'm just going to select out uh, the right hand. So the right hand, if I type in hand underscore R, I think, and then a star, then we should just select the right hand for place person one, P1, and person two, P2. We don't actually want P2, so we'll probably just say P1 slash hand, and we'll just get the person one. So these are the, the different values that we have. So now if I move my hand left and right, we can see that it's not actually relating to the screen space. If I go a little bit here, I'm 0.4, but if I go sort of, I have to go, it has to be really awkward if I go all the way back here and I get like 0.3. And the same with Y, it's all a bit sort of nasty and Z will be pretty much the same as if we change it over to the image space. So if I now calculate image space positions, we can see the difference there. We have 0.9 here and 0.5 here. So for image space, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off those world space and then image space will, sh will show us that if I move my hand to the right hand side, I get 0.8. If I move my hand to the left, I get 0. So this is really the screen space that the Kinect sees. The interesting thing about world space positions though is that they will follow me. So image space is sometimes good, world space is sometimes good to use. And actually for this tutorial I think maybe I'll just use world space just to show how we can manipulate those values to actually fit our screen. So we have TX and if I move my hand to the centre of my body which is sort of comfortable without having to go all the way over here, it's not very good, no one wants to be, able, no, no one's going to do that. People want to just kind of have the hand here. It's quite natural from zero. And then I move to the right, you'll see it goes to 0 0.45. So zero to 0 0.45 or 0 0.5. And that's quite a nice sort of, you know, movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this number here to fit the X from the screen space. So if I turn on my sphere, which is this one here, this is my attractor sphere. If I turn this on, we can see that it's at 5.1 right now. Right at the edge of the screen, where it's about here, which is probably a nice place, it's 7.2. Or we can set it to minus 7.2, and we'll probably get it on the other side, and we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my value, which is comfortable here, into minus 7.2 to 7.2. In fact, let's just use 7. It's easier. So we can use the range tab on the math chart to do that. So I can say 0, and I think it was 0 0.45, was comfortable. And then I can set minus 7 to 7. And don't worry, if you don't bear with me, you're about to visualize exactly what happens. So it's not, it will become quite sort of self-evident as to what, what I'm doing here. So if I then just hit relative chop reference, dragging the chop over from the viewer, uh, hand RTX to the center of X, then we'll see that we now have the hand moving around. It's currently jumping around because it can't see my hand. Um, so it's at, at the moment it's at 9, 10, but if I now move my hand left and right, we can see that it follows my hand left and right. And the particles will then start heading towards my hand. So that's quite nice. And that's quite sim nice and fluent. There is a little bit of ugliness there because it's sort of jittering around. But to be honest, for the dem purposes of this demo, that's not to worry. You can use a filter chop to sort that out if you want or you can start playing around with these parameters down here. But all we're going to do is leave it as it is and just turn that sphere off for now. So that's all great, but what if we go off the screen? Then the particles start to head off the screen and we don't really want that. We want them to always look like they're heading towards a hand. So what we can do is we can limit our, um, we can then limit our values, we can clamp them between those values which are in our two range, which is minus seven to seven. So if I just set that to minus seven to seven, now the values will no longer go past seven, but I need to re-export because I'm referencing from here. So I need to right click view, go into my geometry, 
and drag that new value that we've generated onto the uh, onto the correct sphere two tx parameter. And you'll see now, as I move around, the particles just appear to head towards wherever my hand is. And they kind of turn around and don't quite know where they want to go. And now we want to do the exact same thing for ty. So if we then just choose, uh, in fact, I'm just going to select, I'm just going to put a, another select off this one. And just choose a hand underscore r, uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to say ty. And that will just do it. So let's type in ty star ty. Uh, star ty star rather, or asterisk. Um, and then we can do the same thing again with a math. And now we can sort of look at this value here and see what looks sort of correct. So if I just, I'm going to kind of bring it up here just so we can see it. Uh, so now if I bring my hand up, we go to 0 0.3, 0 0.2. If I bring my hand down, we go to kind of minus 2, minus 0 0.2. So let's say minus 0 0.2 to about 0 0.3. So minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 feels good. So if I then say range minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, helps will type in minus 0 0.2. And now we need to know what the sphere's value is going to be. So if I just turn my sphere back on and then uh, choose the center and kind of move it up. So about 3.5 and to minus 3.5 is probably a good range there. So if I then say minus 3.5 to 3.5 and then I'm going to limit that as well. Then we can limit that uh, uh, minus 3.5 to 3.5 and then we can view that and we can kind of bring that down into the sphere and we can reference that in the center. So now the particles will head towards wherever my hand is on the screen. They're going to kind of follow on and then they'll chase my hand. Um, so that's the very basics of connect. The main thing you want to do is use maths to kind of set the range to be whatever you want and then limit the areas that you want to trigger. So we can do the same thing again with a math for triggering a um, triggering a sort of a push forward. So let's say for example we want to trigger push forward. We can do that in a couple of ways. One way we can do it is by triggering using a trigger. Oh, sorry. Trigger. It helps if I actually type correctly. So now we've got a trigger. And I'm just going to choose to a threshold. We're going to trigger on probably decreasing values. So if we look at our hand TZ value here, as I push forward, that value goes down to about 0.5-ish, from 1 to 0.5. So 1's my body, 0.5 is kind of like my outstretched hand. So if I now set my trigger threshold to about 0.55, and then say on decreasing values, because we're going to push from 1 to there, and then actually if it helps if I go back to my trigger so we can see that. Uh, and in fact, I'm just going to get rid of those other two channels so we can see. I'm just going to select um, the TZ. There we go. So now as I push forward, we can see, well, it helps if it actually goes past that trigger threshold. There it goes. But um, it will trigger. So in fact, my trigger's a bit sort of too far there. I'm just going to choose a... Um, maybe about 0.65. So now as I push forward, if I push forward, I'm triggering whatever is happening when I push forward. If I wanted to hold that value so that, for example, let's say you were looking at a room and you wanted to only get people who were within a certain area of the connect space, we could do that by uh, using something like TZ, for example. We could use that by, um, rather than triggering, because triggering will always go back to zero after it's gone through its ADSR filter. Um, we could use instead a, a sort of a bit of logic that says, is the value less than this? If so, one, else, zero. So we can use a, a bit of a, a Boolean comparison sort of uh, situation. So to do that, we can actually do that with a math and a limit if we really want to, um, by simply, without scrolling up, choosing a math. So let's say we want 0 0.65. So we're going to say one to 0 0.65. And then we're going to say 0 to 1. So what this does now is that it goes 0, and then 1 is when it's at 0 0.65. And then if we use a round on that, 
of an integer, we'll say zero, and then as we go in, we get one. So that's a really simple way of kind of saying, are we in this area? And if not, you know, we need to pull out. You can also do a double sort of um, comparison as well by using another method, and that method would be to use an expression. So I'm in T-script mode, so just to show this in T-script mode, um, it's just ifs dollar v is greater than, sorry, is less than 0 0.6, 1, else 0. But what we could do is we could say if dollar v is less than 0 0.6 and dollar v is also greater than 0 0.5, 1, else 0. So what that means now is that if we get, we can go so far close, but we can't go any further, otherwise we'll go back to 0 again. So if I go forward, it should go 1, and then 0, 1. So if I push too far, it goes 0. If I sit in this sweet spot, it's 1. And as I come back, we kind of change the value depending on where we are. 